Hello and welcome to the show with me, Gillian Godsell. Today, my guest is Dean McClelland, who is the founder of Tom Team Trust. We're going to talk about pensions today. We were talking, just chatting before we started recording. Pensions, everybody hates them. You want one, you want a big fat one, but nobody wants to talk about them. They want, don't want to do the auto and roll business. They don't want to think about it. Why are pensions such a big problem? Gillian, I can't believe you mentioned the P word. It's like everybody will just switch off. We've already lost all your viewers. Yeah, they've switched off. They've gone to watch something else instead. Yeah, pensions. Um, it's, it's, it's two things. One, it's, it's emotional. People don't want to talk about it. It's quite strange. And secondly, the mechanics of it are, are broken. So yeah. the, the emotional thing, well, let's just talk about that very briefly. Why do people not want to talk about pensions? Surely that would be something that you would want to talk about. Um, yeah, well, I, I think people just see it as something in the future. They don't want to think about it. Everything's going to work out. You know, people want to be optimistic. But the reality is, you know, the dream is over. If you think back, you know, to when we were growing up, our picture of pensions was that, you know, you know, you retire at 65, you've got all this money in the bank, you join the golf club, and you've got this beautiful, uh, relaxed uh, rest of your life. And, you know, at some point, you leave a big ton of money to the kids. Yeah, that's the dream. Yeah? yeah. I, you know, this is, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's Typically, you die, you die quite soon, though, as well, in that scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Your life expectancy has gone up. Yeah. In the, I guess in the good old days, you know, you, you only lasted 10 or 15 years into retirement, and then whatever money was left over, it went to the kids. Yeah. Um, but that all, all started going wrong, you know, mm -hmm. back in the 60s and 70s. Um, and in the 80s, they did the math and the pension companies realized, well, you know what, investment returns aren't where we thought they were going to be. Uh, people are living a bit longer. Oh, we don't have enough money. And it got to the point where they, they realized, you know, this is going to be a catastrophe. So they, they basically... It's also, isn't the aging population as well, isn't it? It's, yeah. So we have yeah. we've less people paying tax into the systems, basically. Well, that's the, that's the problem with the government pensions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got all the older baby boomer generation is now moving into retirement. So they're not earning money. So they're not paying income tax. And then you've got this smaller group of millennials that are working and paying tax into these pensions, which is being used to pay this big group of um, retired baby boomers. Um, so basically, uh, to give you a number, uh, not to bore you with statistics, the richest 20 OECD countries in the world currently have an $80 trillion shortfall uh, in their pension funds because of what you just described. And it's going up by 5% per year. So it's bigger than GDP and it's rising faster than GDP. So basically, more or less, your government pension is gone. Forget about wow. it. Okay. Um, so it's all down to you saving uh, on your own volition. Yeah. That's um, so scary. If you think so let's, let's just reflect on that. So government pensions are not worth the, the check. The ink is not worth the check. It's money no. it's written on. It's, it's funny when I talk to people in Ireland that, you know, this is, you know, they still trust the government to be able to deliver and maybe the government, you know, does have a way to deliver. But if I talk to people in Switzerland, you know, which is, you know, one of the strongest countries in the world, you would imagine, every single millennial I talk to that's putting money into a government pension, they think, you know, we'll never see that money back. It's gone. It's like a tax. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's how they view it. That's serious. Yeah, so that's that's the. State I mean, of the they, they, they talk about the t the pension time bomb, but it's gone off already. It's not a, it's not going off. It has gone off. Yeah. Well, so I, the system I, was I, broken. Yeah, but let me let me tell you how they broke it. So in in the nineteen eighties, they moved away from what they call this defined benefit pension system, which told you you know you're going to get you know three thousand a month for the rest of your life, no matter how long you live, and they said from now on, all the money that you know, we, you save every month, goes into an account. So it's an account-based pension. And when you reach retirement, hopefully it's grown by a decent amount. And then they give you a chunk of money and say, that's there. Now, off you go. You've now got to make that money last the rest of your life. You've got to choose how to invest it. And you've got to work out how long you're going to live and spread that money out. Yeah. But think about it. The pensions industry got those numbers wrong. They, they were professionals. They couldn't manage it. How do they expect individuals to be able to manage this? And that's wow. where we are today. And that's you know, where we are today. There's, there's an extra layer I can add in there as well, is that taking my case, because I went through the financial crash, I don't have a house, I don't own a house, I don't, haven't paid off a mortgage. So when I come to my retirement, not only do I have to rely on my pension for my day-to-day -day needs, I'm still paying rent. Yeah. And that wasn't factored in. And I'm not broke enough maybe to be in a social housing. I don't know how that works, but I'm not broke enough to be there. 
but I'm, I'll, I'll be renting and I won't have any money. Yeah. So um, I'm stuffed. But, yeah. So basically you're going to, you know, you're going to reach retirement let's say uh, 65 um, you know, you'll have bought new Godzilla Towers, paid off the mortgage, hopefully. In 10 um, years. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> when your big TV channel sells off. Um, but you've now got to worry about, you know, we, hopefully you're not paying rent. Uh, but if you are, you've got to keep paying that because if you run out of money, you're homeless. Yeah. So, oh, and I've been there before. So yeah. that's, that's a real worry that I have. That in, in, if I stop earning money, how do I pay rent? What happens if you get sick? What happens if you need paid um, long-term care and you run oh. out of money? Well, then I'm definitely stuffed. Yeah. It's an absolute <laughs> I'm really depressed now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it's a, it's a depressing subject, but we, you know, we do have an answer. But the, the trick is at the moment, everybody's living in this, um, this dream scenario where they still think it's like the good old days that they'll just have this thing. But the reality is that you as a woman, have a 43% chance. Actually, no, if you were a 65-year-old woman, you'd already have a 43% chance of living into your 90s. Well, my mom is 90 this year. Yeah. So So your your retirement is going to be longer than your working career. Yeah? So you you need to have saved enough and put it away to last you another 35 years in retirement. It's it's madness. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the answer? Uh-huh. Before I go and top myself. <laughs> yeah. So the trick is, at the moment, you, you've got the problem. So you've sold uh, Godzilla TV. You've, so, um, you've paid off the mortgage on Godzilla Towers. Let's say, you know, you've paid your capital gains tax. You've got a million euros in the bank. Yeah. And you're 65. And you're saying, right, that's it. I've had enough. I'm going to hang up my boots, play golf, whatever. You just want to relax. Yeah. And the issue is, you've now got to think, okay, well, how long am I going to live? I've got to make this money last. And essentially, if you think you're going to end up, you know, becoming at least the same age as your mother, you can actually only spend about two and a half thousand a month um, from that million that you're keeping on deposit at the bank. And in the meantime, you're not earning any interest at the bank uh, mm-hmm. because, you know, there is no the interest rates are zero. So you've got two and a half thousand a month. Um, and if you pay that, you're still going to run out of money. If you end up living to the same age as your mom, you're going to run out of money completely. And yeah. that's but with a the million mid- in the bank. Yes, that's starting with a million. Yeah. And that two and a half thousand you're paying yourself is going to suffer from inflation all the way along. So by the time you get to that age, it's going to feel like 500 pounds or something like that. You know, it's not, it's not going to be meaningful in any way. Um, so at some point you're going to start, you know, you're going to be buying the cheaper toilet paper. You're going to be grumbling about every time milk goes up by a penny. You know, that's what happens. That's the retirement that everybody is facing now. Um, that doesn't have one of these, you know, golden government pensions or anything like that. Um, so I only came across this about three and a half years ago. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the story about how it came about. Uh, but I ended up reading all these scientific papers, all these uh, from academics all around the world saying, you know what, there's a solution to this. We need to bring back this 350-year-old instrument and it's going to solve the whole thing. Um, and that's the Tom team. The Tontine, okay, yeah. of Tontine Trust. Exactly. Um, so this, so this what is, really, is a Tontine? Well, basically, the idea is that, you know, you, uh, am I allowed to say how old you are on the show? Yes, yes, yep, yep. But are you hanging up? Right. So you, let's say you, you were born in 1965? Correct, yep. Right. So when you reach retirement, instead of you sitting there with a million in your account, worrying about how much you can spend every month, you know, should you invest it, should you take some advice, um, the, the trick is you join a, a club. Yeah? So it's like you, you put a mil- you're put your million in the trust with 10,000 other ladies also born in 1965 that also want to have a nice relaxing retirement. Um, the money's in, invested defensively you know, through one of the big uh, brand name asset managers. Um, and the trick is that now for every month for the rest of your life, you're going to get a little message say, on your phone saying, Hi, Gillian. We haven't seen your wonderful smile in four weeks and you've got a payment coming up. Please, can you log in and just validate your account? So you pick up your phone, you log in, you know, you've, you've, val- you've validated that you're in control of the account, but you're using facial recognition. And the facial recognition says, yep, yeah, that's Gillian. She's in great health. Um, and as soon as you disconnect, the money's in your account in the next two seconds. 
Yeah. So yep. that continues every month for the rest of your life. So even I think we've worked out it can work all the way up to age 120. Yeah. Okay, that's but fair the, enough. But the, the golden rule is if you're dead, you don't need the money. Yeah. That's so if, okay. If, if you're dead, you don't need the money. That's I can, yeah, I can cope yep. with that. Great. So what happens bit by bit is we start off with these 10,000 ladies. Um, and all let's born say the you, same year. So we're all the same age. So it's a level yeah. playing field in that regard. Exactly. It has to be a fair, you know, it's a, we, we compare it sometimes to the hunger games of pensions, but it has to be a fair game. That's the idea. Um, so you start off, you've got a million in the bank. I think the numbers uh, we worked out is that on day one, you're getting paid roughly about 3,400 uh, per month. Um, but what happens is that year by year, the number of ladies in the pool starts getting smaller. Um, so you go from 10,000 age 65, maybe down to 9,000 age 70. Um, and at this point, uh, you know, a thousand ladies no longer need the money. Um, and their, once their payments stop, that money starts getting shared with everybody else. Yeah. So what happens, this continues over time that you go from 10,000 to 9,000 to 8,000 to 7,000. Uh, all the time, the share that you're receiving every month when you log in is going up and up and up. Um, and if you're one of the lucky ladies that ends up living to be the same age as your mother, Actually, you know, we've got a problem because we have to pay all the money out to all of the members before the last of the members passes away. So we're probably, I think we did calculations the other day. It's like we're paying you 20 or 25,000 a month at this point because we have to distribute all the money to the lucky ladies that uh, ended up living to that age. Brilliant. That, yeah, so the whole so point if, is So if you're that, healthy, this is the game for you. And you're yeah. betting well, on yourself. Well, the trick is if you... If you are living in fear of running out of money, yeah. you, know, you have no incentive to take care of your health. Yeah. Yeah. But if we turn this around, if you're invested into a tontine, you're now receiving income every month for as long as you live, and you know it's going to increase over time because yeah. not everybody's going to live to be 100. So you've now got, a, you've now got um, an incentive, a financial incentive to take better care of your health. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and also you've got something to look forward to. Unlike, as yeah. I say, counting out how much is the milk going to cost or can I afford to go to the theatre this month yeah. or those issues just go away because you're getting more and more money. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, you know, and I, I watched an amazing interview a couple of years ago um, about the definition of happiness. Um, and they were saying that, you know, the, the definition of happiness is a, an expectation of positive change in the future. Um, and... That's what, that's what a tontine delivers. So instead of you worrying that your money is going down and you're probably going to run out and stressing about it, actually you're looking forward because you know, you know, bit by bit. It goes up next month. That's, that's yeah. my pay rise. That's nice. Yeah. So wh where are you at with it? So it's, 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 it's an old instrument, but do you have to get a new license for it? How does that work? Well, we, we've been working on this for three years. You know, we've been filing patents all over the world. We've got a granted trademark for tontine pensions in Europe. Um, and we were looking for a country that wanted the honor of being the first one to launch a modern, pure tontine pension. Um, so we spent a lot of time in Asia, where they're massively in need of this. And then we suddenly get this call telling us, you know what, Europe has just passed legislation to encourage the development of low-cost lifetime income products across Europe. So basically, we now have the opportunity to build in one European country and distribute it in 33 countries by the end of next year. Um, and this is what we're doing. Wow. And have you chosen your country? Um, obviously, for obvious reasons, uh, the preference is Ireland. Uh, but the reality is that um, Ireland is a little bit behind the game in terms of updating its pensions laws. Um, we don't know if they've, what the plan is in terms of implementing the new pan-European pension legislation. Um, uh, we've actually been on the phone with Luxembourg this morning. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of rivalry between Luxembourg and Ireland, which was evident as soon as we picked up the phone. Um, but they, they are making a play to roll out pan-European pension products. Um, Belgium is also going for this. Uh, Belgium you know, sees itself as the pan-European pension capital of Europe. But in an ideal world, we'll build everything out of Ireland. Wow. Um, Tell me about the technology underpinning this uh, financial instrument and why it's important? Um, the 
tontines themselves um, originated 350 years ago. Um, it was used by the King of France to finance a war against England. Um, England were so desperate to raise money to fight back against France that they ended up issuing a tontine, and all the governments used to finance themselves. Uh, because it was the, if you read Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations, uh, he said, you know, this is, you know, this is the fastest selling pension product if you ever want to issue one. How do um, companies use tontines to raise money then? Do they have to pay back people or how does that work? Well, this is how the governments used to do it before, before they had bonds. But eventually they worked out how to create bonds and that okay. was a much cheaper financing method. So it went out of fashion. Um, and then 150 years ago, uh, the Henry Hyde, the founder of Equitable Life in the US, read about tontines. Um, read how popular they were and brought them over to the US. Um, it was so successful, the launch, that it, uh, every other big insurance company copied it. And the Tontines grew the US pension industry by 600% within a single generation. So basically, everybody wanted to save into a Tontine. Uh, but the problem that went wrong in the US is that all the insurance companies started to defraud the members. Um, so they were, they were tampering with the membership ledgers. They were investing in all sorts of dodgy assets. Um, they were churning people back and forth between different companies and charging the commissions, the sales commissions, out of the pension monies. Um, and it was just, it was just incredibly um, uh, fraudulent behavior. Um, and in 1906, the insurance regulator came along and said, look, this is completely unacceptable. You can't do this to people. Um, and they said, here's the rules you need to play by. And if you can't do it by this, you know, you need to stop selling them. And the insurance company said, but if we play the, by those rules, we never make any money. So they literally took the products off the market and switched to selling something that you may have heard of called a life annuity. Uh, are you familiar yeah. with yes. that term? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So going back to then the technology, so you using blockchain and that's because of its transparency and mutability. Yeah. So the, the trick is, you know, Tontines are an inherently safe product, you know, for the most risk averse investors. You know, they are, you know, they're incredibly um, effective solution. But what happened before was that the insurance companies defrauded the members. Uh, so when I'm reading about all the academic papers about we need to bring this back, um, you know, the big thing is we need to be transparent about what all the tontines are investing in so that there's no possibility of fraud. Um, we need to ma uh, make it impossible to tamper with the members so that you can't suddenly have someone arriving Joining. as if they've been in the tont yeah, mm, and getting yeah. the 20,000 20, a month. Um, but you need to keep all the members anonymous to each other uh, because, you know, if you've seen any of the Tontine movies, you know, they're, they're all murder. Plots this is where the murder comes in. Ah, yes. yes, you murder someone because you increase your, your monthly income. Okay, so yeah. all anonymous, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So it's, the whole murder thing is complete nonsense. Um, but there's a perception out there that it happens. So keeping everybody anonymous to each other, you know, as you know, uh, blockchain, if you, want, if you want transparency, you want to make it impossible for anybody to uh, tamper with any of the records, uh, and you keep everybody anonymous to each other. You know, it's a natural technology for that. Wow. So what's the time frame then in terms of coming to market? What are the milestones? What's the time frame? Um, so we, we're doing a seed round at the moment um, to raise the money to get us to get the production version launched. So to all intensive purposes, think of it as a digital savings bank that's going to offer its product uh, initially across all of Europe and eventually globally within a couple of years. Um, we should have that live within, I think, within three months of completing the round. So we'll be in production by the end of the year. Um, wow. and we can already start offering it on a cross-border basis uh, into other markets. Um, and you know, to, give, to give you an idea of demand, um, there, was a, there was a report by the Irish Funds uh, Association. I, can't, I, th I think it's called the Irish Funds, the industry body. Um, they did a report on pan-European pensions a few years ago, and they said, oh, well, we're not sure if there'll be big demand. Well, we've already got 10,000 people signed up on our waiting list um, talking about investing between 250,000 and a million into their pension uh, when we go live. Um, and we've never spent a penny on advertising. You know, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Where what? are the people signing up? Where can they find you? Uh, well, on, on the website, which is, of course, tontine.com. 
And T O N T I N E. Um, yeah. Um, oh. And the, the trick is, you know, we've got people signing up there every day saying, you know, we, we love what you're doing. Please let us know as soon as this is launched uh, because they need it. Yeah. It's, um, you know, nobody wants to worry about, you know, the price of milk, the price of toilet roll. And, you know, should I be spending this money? You know, you want to be able to relax and enjoy your retirement. And that's what we've set out to do. And look and be healthy and look forward to increasing income over the years. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's, Tom uh, Teens is where it's at. The website is tontinetrust.com or tontine.com? Uh, both. Both. Oh, excellent. Okay, you have them both. Well done. Um, so if anyone wants to find more information, they can go and find you there, Dean, and sign up for the product. Uh, well, they can get on the waiting list. Uh, we're a few months away uh, from launch, but uh, for sure we'll be contacting everybody when we're good to go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much indeed for your time today. That's excellent. So it's Dean McClelland from the founder of Tontine Trust. Thank you very much okay, indeed. Brilliant. Cheers, Gillian.